You are too concerned with what was and what will be. There's a saying. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. So when doing my research in preparation for this video, I didn't realize how many animated trilogies we have gotten in my lifetime. And while some range from pretty pointless and forgettable, there are only a rare few that I have seen get quite the praise as the Kung Fu Panda trilogy. Of course you have your Toy Story trilogy, the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy, which I guess is the Mike Tyson to the Kung Fu Panda's Muhammad Ali, the Cars trilogy, the Lego Movie trilogy, Despicable Me, and let's not forget about the ye olde reliable, the Madagascar trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget watching those films. Even as a chicken, that trilogy had me questioning my self-awareness. But with the release of Kung Fu Panda 4 in about a week or so, a movie that I didn't even know was needed or there was even a market for another installment. So I never really thought to myself before the trailer dropped, but I was someone who has never even seen a Kung Fu Panda movie. For all of the random praise that I would see here and there, it never just clicked in my head. Hey, have you ever even seen these movies? It was quite honestly surprising when I realized I had it. And while I could have easily just watched a video essay explaining to me the complexities and nuances that make the Kung Fu Panda trilogy so highly rated just from an overwhelming amount of people, what's the fun or the point in that? And in reality, after the immersive and engaging experience that was Dune 2, what's a better match for the palette than a highly regarded animated series? And well, that was the correct decision because I can confidently say that the majority opinion might actually be cooking with this one. The Kung Fu Panda trilogy is a surprisingly deep and nuanced trilogy with so many different themes, values, and lessons in play that reach both kids and adults alike. And it's unfortunate that some people feel insecure about something as feeble as saying that an animated trilogy has lessons and morals that adults can still learn from because that is simply not the case and in reality, who cares? The Kung Fu Panda trilogy is about a journey and a path that one takes to find out who they are. A trilogy about destiny and expectations set upon you. A trilogy about friendships and family that supports each other despite their flaws that a person might have. A trilogy about past trauma and how the past doesn't have to make you who you are, but how your actions in the present do. These are all extremely powerful and moving lessons, and while those are just some of the few and definitely oversimplified thoughts that the Kung Fu Panda trilogy leaves the audience with, that doesn't mean that that is the best or the only aspect that the Kung Fu Panda trilogy excels at. The action sequences are actually pretty top tier when it comes to the choreography and the power scaling. All of the characters, supporting or otherwise, are either likable, relatable, and definitely charismatic. The world and the lore is fleshed out in a healthy, meaningful, and digestible way in order to not oversaturate. Comedy that doesn't just fall flat on its face for both adults and kids, and pacing that was honestly a breath of fresh air compared to all of the two hour plus movies that are becoming the norm in the past half decade in Hollywood. But in order to avoid the endless sound of my voice rambling on and on until you eventually become comatose, I decided to talk about the two aspects that I personally believe made the Kung Fu Panda such a renowned, impactful, and long-lasting trilogy. Starting off with... So with these movies still so fresh in my mind, Poe is the pinnacle of why these movies are so successful. And while that might seem pretty obvious seeing how Poe is the main protagonist of the story, if you've watched literally more than like four movies and maybe even two TV shows, you'll realize that's not always the case and honestly, pretty rare. But the character of Poe was written and crafted in such a way that he isn't even an active or exaggerated version or ideal of what a typical person might face or struggle with within their lifetime. He just is that person. The symbol for everyone who has had a dream or a goal but didn't believe in themselves that they had it in them to even start it off, or feel like other responsibilities were more important at the time. Therefore, Poe creates his own content reality and faces the fact that Kung Fu maybe just isn't for him. 
Sound familiar? The question that Poe has faced throughout the entirety of the trilogy is more or less, who is he? And while some could see that as a criticism of the writing and lessons at play, saying it's a little bit more redundant throughout the trilogy, I don't believe it is. The path that one takes in life isn't about one choice, one event, one's fate or destiny thrown upon them, one's responsibilities, or even one's past. And with every new adventure that Poe takes, there's always something new to be learned in his path to finding out who he is. Along with the support of his friends, his master, his family, and some trials and tribulations along the way, you watch as Poe goes from an insecure, self-conscious, self-loathing, clumsy, unintelligent, unfocused, and pretty much a non-existent character in his community to a confident, stoic, determined, and semi-competent team player who, more importantly, became self-aware of his own strengths and weaknesses that define who he wants to be going forward. And by the end of the trilogy, Poe now believes in his own self-image. Poe is the Dragon Warrior. There were no mistakes, there are no accidents, which leads to the real lesson of the story and what makes Poe's character so important to the success of this trilogy. There's no special or secret ingredient to what makes someone special. What makes you special is what you choose to make of yourself. Yeah, so now we're getting to the juicy stuff. So in reality, the villains are really the main reason why I believe the Kung Fu Panda trilogy is so relatable and rewatchable for adults. Which kind of makes us adults sound pretty bad, but eh, it's whatever. We all know we just turned out like Squidward at the end of the day. While as a kid, you might not be able to understand or fully comprehend, at least I hope not, the deeper themes of abandonment, the pressures of fate and or destiny, or not living up to expectations set upon you and the tremendous amount of guilt or disappointment that follows. But those are all of the reasons why BetterHelp is a YouTube ad on pretty much one out of every five YouTube channels. Don't worry, that was not an ad plug. But while Poe exemplifies and displays on screen most of the good-natured elements and aspects that come with the journey of figuring out oneself, characters such as Tai Lung and Shen exemplify, reflect, and pretty much are characters that provide a counterbalance or a different perspective to the life choices and actions that Poe is facing in the particular movie. For Tai Lung, he is almost the complete opposite of who Poe is when they were first introduced, a character that already had great expectations placed upon him growing up, a character with a path of who he was and is supposed to be laid out on a silver platter, only to have that taken away from him with no fight, no resistance, or no reassurance from his master, his guardian, his father figure. And I think that the movie does a good job displaying how hatred and resentment can manifest and blindly take over and lead a person's life over time, eventually even corrupting that very person and nature of who they are. And when it comes to the character of Shen, He's the first villain introduced where it becomes much more personal for Poe, and because of that, much more personal for us the audience. Shen represents the trauma of facing one's past, and how that past doesn't have to define who we are or who we want to become in our present and future. In the movie specifically, Shen is a character who fears his own destiny, and instead of letting his path run its course, he decides to make the active choice that maybe he can change his own destiny. And while that caused almost the genocide of all of the pandas, Shen at the end of the day is the very opposite of Poe when it comes to being an active character when it comes to his goals. When Poe finally finds out the details about his past and where he came from, instead of turning his emotions into narcissism, hatred, resentment, and self-loathing, Poe shows Shen the way that one's destiny, one's life, is merely what you make of it. Extremely powerful stuff. And while admittedly Kai, the villain of the third film, was definitely the weaker villain of the franchise when it came to the personal relations with Poe, and even just the complexity of the character in general, I unfortunately blame the writers for making Kai a more centralized Ugwe villain, and not just getting the timeline right by trying to connect the dots with Poe's character a little bit more. Overall, after actually watching the movies, it's pretty easy to understand why so many people champion and triumph over the Kung Fu Panda trilogy, I would be lying to you if I said that I wasn't laughing throughout the majority of the movies, with Monkey and Mantis definitely being standout characters. I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you that the action sequences were immersive, 
fun and choreographed to near perfection. I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you that Shifu and Tigris are some of the best supporting characters that I've seen in an animated project. And for a trilogy that is so widely considered for kids, the deep-rooted themes of abandonment, trauma, abuse, resentment, and self-image are so hidden in plain sight that it's pretty easy to miss as a kid. But the themes and lessons of self-confidence, growth, self-acceptance, believing in yourself, and following your dreams are front and center of the show. Lessons that are not hard to miss. Lessons that are by far the most important to convey, and honestly, are lessons that everyone of all ages should never forget. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.